People versus Damien, Antonique, Dante Sinclair, 226951FY. Mr. Sinclair appears here this afternoon in court. Signed counsel is Daniel Jaspin, who is in court. Prosecution appears through prosecutor Lisa Richards. Your investigating officer this afternoon is Officer Adams. First name again? Ryan. Ryan. Thank you. At least they should put the first initial. Give us a little hint. All right, then. Uh, concerning the matter, I'm just going to give a little recap of where we left off on the 11th of July. At that time, Mr. Jasmine was standby counsel for Mr. Sinclair, who had requested standby counsel at an earlier hearing, according to the Register of Actions. That was on June 21st of 2022. Mr. Sinclair invoked the right of self-representation. Mr. Jasmine was CAFA counsel. Mr. Sinclair requested standby counsel. It was referred to the MAC manager. Mr. Jasmine was or assigned himself as standby counsel. He appeared in court. Uh, there was a PCC that was sent. PCC was waived. We appeared in court for the preliminary examination. I should double check to make sure. I'm not sure if the PCC was waived. Your Honor, I think what happened, I was out of town at that point. I had filed a waiver, but I think that nevertheless the hearing was held. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Other than the fact that I was appointed as his counsel at that point and not as his counsel. All right, the problem, yes, we did have a probable cause conference July 5th. Um, bond remained the same. The magistrate held that, so I don't remember. All right, so in respect to July 11th, then we come up for the preliminary examination. Numerous issues were addressed. Shortly before that, I received a lengthy letter from Mr. Sinclair that was received at the court on July the 6th. Um, in, in regard to various witnesses and subpoenas that he wished for his preliminary examination as well. There was a four page letter with looks like 26 paragraphs. Concerning the matter then on July the 11th, we started off in court. Uh, Mr. Sinclair was unwilling to address the court in respect to the court's questions as to whether or not he was willing to waive his right to counsel and proceed with self-representation. We had several issues that were addressed by Mr. Sinclair at that time. Some had been brought to the court's attention on the date of the hearing. Uh, some were contained in the letter that was received a few days prior. Regarding the matter then, Mr. Sinclair, when, when Mr. Sinclair was unwilling to advise the court of whether or not he was willing to waive his right to counsel, the court requested that standby counsel become assigned counsel of record. Also, various issues were addressed. Mr. Sinclair was warned repeatedly about potential contemptuous behavior. Ultimately, the court found Mr. Sinclair in direct contempt of court and sentenced him to 93 days in jail. That order of sentence was entered on July 11th of 2022. The court received a request from Mr. Uh, Sinclair that was dated and received by the court on July the 13th, asking for the uh, preliminary hearing transcript for July the 11th. Upon receipt of that matter on July the 13th, the court did refer the matter to the court transcriptionist to fulfill Mr. Sinclair's request for transcripts on that date. Concerning today's date then, the court has received various documents in the interim time since July the 11th. Let's see, today is the 26th. I received from Mr. Jaspin um, 
yesterday on the 25th, a motion to withdraw and notice of hearing. He, mo he moves to withdraw as counsel or in the alternative for forensic examinations concerning Mr. Sinclair. Essentially, Mr. Jaspin recaps some of the chronology that the court has uh, placed on the record today. <clears throat> Mr. Jaspin, I'm going to uh, get to your motion here in a moment in, in respect to uh, the letter that I received as well from Mr. Sinclair yesterday. Uh, again, re-requesting the preceding transcripts. Those are on the way, Mr. Sinclair. Um, and then there's also a request to appeal pursuant to Michigan 6.65B. Well, he claims appeal of right. Uh, and wants... Um, as I understand it, transcripts from July 11th, which I'm very well aware of. And it looks like he's asking for counsel to be appointed on his appeal. I'm not quite sure based on all of the different uh, representations that Mr. Sinclair has made, if I'm ascertaining that correctly. So we're set for a continued preliminary examination as well. I'm going to hear, I guess I think it makes sense to hear from you, Mr. Jaspin, first, then I'll hear from Mr. Sinclair, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, I guess I would supplement my motion by noting that we have a telephone call. As I indicated, uh, since the court appointed me on the 11th, uh, Mr. Sinclair is, has indicated he does not consent to me being his counsel. Um, I did file the motion. A copy was taken to the jail yesterday to be given to him. Following that, uh, he did. He called and I had a conversation with him where he threatened to uh, report me to the Attorney Grievance Commission based on me filing this motion. So, what, when did that conversation? What did you? Can you say that over that last sentence? That was yesterday. He called me and we talked. He asked why I filed it, and I said it speaks for itself, basically. And he said, well, if, if I persist in it, something to the effect that if I persist in it, he's going to refer to the Attorney Grievance Commission. Um, I obviously don't believe there's any basis for any such action, but in any event, that's what he threatened. I think it's perfectly clear, given that, regardless of anything else, uh, that I can't continue as his attorney. It's clearly a breakdown in the attorney-client relationship. Regarding the balance of it, where the board orders examinations or asks him to represent himself, um, I guess I will leave that to the court. I really strongly resist any order that other counsel be appointed for him since the same thing's going to happen again. Um, we'd be spinning our wheels by doing that. So that's where I'm at. Um, I guess we may not leave to the court. All right, Mr. Uh, Sinclair. Do you have a response in respect to these issues of Mr. Jaspin remaining or not remaining as your counsel? You want to represent yourself? Are you going to answer that question today? Do you want to make a record? I'm going to give you the floor. Make any record that you want if you want to, Mr. Sinclair. I'm here on special appearance for the defendant, the accused. I need to know if we are on the record. We are on the record again. It'll be on the record all day. You don't have to ask that question. Please, let's not go back to last week. We are not going to stop the record. Okay? So for the record, I am not. Mr. Sinclair or any other variations of anything but a live human being known as Damian of the Sinclair family. I'm the beneficiary. I received counsel from Dan Jaspin, P. 
P41091, a motion to withdraw as counsel or in the alternative of forensic examination on 7-25-22. That the re record reflect that this legal mail was delivered to me in paper form by Dickinson County Correctional Staff. The legal mail sent from Mr. Jasmine was a violation of attorney-client confidentiality and it was not sealed in the envelope to protect attorney-client privilege. Let the record also reflect that this motion is not filed correctly, therefore rendering it inadmissible pursuant to MCR 2.119C4, which states that the motions must be filed within seven days prior to the hearing. Now, Mr. Jasmine has suggested that I do some type of mental competent to see if I can understand, if I can uh, be competent to stand trial. I don't know if he has the authority to make that type of uh, analyzation, considering that he couldn't properly stand a motion within the time allowed. So I'm not sure who needs the uh, mental uh, comp competence, but I know that I do not. As I said before on record that I am a sovereign citizen. I am protected by the Constitution for the United States of America. Okay. I'm listening. I Keep reserve my right under one UCC one dash three zero eight. Okay. Keep going. Whenever else you want to say, the floor is yours, Mr. Sinclair. I am not the name defendant. And I must address that as long as you call me Mr. Sinclair, I'm Damian of the Sinclair family, or you can call me the beneficiary, or simply just Damian. I'll agree with you on the latter. How if we go about that? Can we, can we compromise on Damian? So the created person attached to my citizen is infringing on my given name. Using styles of my name to define me as a commercial capacity for the person and improperly addressing me in this new capacity and trying to traffic me into your foreign jurisdiction through discreet, through deceit and non disclosure. Naming the me as a territorial foreign trust after giving my name under false pretenses in order to traffic me into this foreign territorial U.S. Ju jurisdiction without my knowledge or consent. Now, last week when we spoke, I asked you if this was a criminal or a civil charge. You mentioned, if I remember correctly, ver not verbatim, that this was a criminal um, uh, charge. I then ask you if there is a criminal charge, there's only two criminal jurisdictions under the Constitution that would apply to me. The first would be common law, which the court hasn't proven that they have corpus delicti over my personal property. So therefore, it can't be common law. And the other one deals with maritime law contracts in which, one, I would have to uh, enter into a, um, a contract agreeingly. Two, I would have to have breached that contract. Four, I was a party to that contract. And I don't believe that I was ever in any type of international maritime contract that this court is operating under amorality jurisdiction. And so if that is the court's claim, 
then I will ask for you to bring that contract into evidence so that I can be able to contest it. So the reason why I want the court to distinguish me from a fictitious person or entity or corporation is because I'm not a citizen of the British Crown. This court operates under a franchise that comes from the British Crown. They created this fictitious entity and hijacked my nationality and my national identity. They created a corporate corporation under the name. This corporation created under my assumed name was not a real person. A fictitious entity or corporation can only do business or contract with the norm, another entity, fictitious entity, or a corporation. Therefore, this court did not legally address me under those terms unless we are dealing with the jurisdiction that is made known to me so that I can intentionally or non-voluntarily accept the terms of the contract. But I do not consent to the contract because the court has obscured the jurisdiction that they're working under. So what I'm asking you to do is have this matter settled and to let me go. Are there other arguments you'd like to make this afternoon at this point? Can anything I say or do be used against me? Yes, sir. We went over that quite quite in depth last week. So I'm asking the court, can you please consider that I do not understand the charges without prejudice under the UCC 1-308 due to mistakes in effect and law, I wish to remain silent. You're absolutely right then. Anything else you wanna say for the record, Mr. Sinclair? I'm sorry. Did you answer me? Did you have anything else you wanted to say right now before I rule? All right, then in regard to the matter, I've noted Mr. Sinclair's objections. He's objecting to the authority of the court uh, over his person, over his name, over essentially any association with the court system. He's adamantly referred to his name. He's insisted he's not the named defendant. He's both last week on the 11th and today stated how he believes he should be referred to in that the court does not have authority over him in that this is not a common law matter, now a maritime matter. He's referenced UCC 1-308 and uh, common law and maritime law. Essentially for the record, Erie Railroad Company versus Tom Tompkins. I'm, I'm sorry, before I rule, do you want to be heard then any further? Let me ask you this, Mr. Jaspin at this point. I have nothing in addition to what I've previously stated. Do you want to be heard, Ms. Richards? Not regarding this issue, Your Honor. All right, Erie Railroad, okay. come. I don't mean to interrupt you, but can I speak? Yes, I was waiting for you. Fin so, finish so, it up. 
What's up? The piece that you're referring to, the Jersey Railroad versus Tompkins. Yes. Had to do with a man who got hit by some type of object from the train when the court decided on the case they decided that the man didn't have any anything to stand on to bring the Erie Railroad Court into the attention because the Erie Railroad was a corporation and Tompkins was addressed as hold on a minute. What? Isn't it outside? We got the window open, of course. Exactly why we can't have the window open around here. We just talked about that. Are they gone? All right. Sorry, Mr. Oh, go ahead. Uh, when that happened, the, the, something happened where that came the beginning point of where corporations was mixed with law and they blended the corporation together with the law. And then the next law that ended up coming into place, where the next case that came into play was Tyson versus, if it's Tyson versus, and I don't know if you have a reference to these cases, but this changed the way that the court address corporations and human beings or citizens of the United States of America. So since then, the British Crown created these corporations or subsidiaries, which was the territorial jurisdiction and the municipal jurisdiction. And then they split the title of these jurisdictions and used the territorial jurisdiction to create the municipal jurisdiction. And then created a fictitious corporation with my given name or an impersonation of my given name and use that fictitious entity to look at me as a foreign QV trust. I'm not a citizen of the federal United States or Washington, D.C. And this isn't a federal matter. I'm not a foreign to this land. So when they are operating through this franchise of municipal courts and jurisdictional territory, you basically are, this court is basically a franchise employed by the Crown of Britain. Some similar to McDonald's, and by taking me as hostage or kidnapping is in the capacity of a pirate. I am my argument there. All right, thank you. All of your objections are noted for the record, Mr. Sinclair, they're preserved for appeal. In regard to my ruling, every citizen 
or subject of another country while domiciled here is within the allegiance and the protection and consequently, consequently subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. U.S. versus Wong Kim, 169 U.S. 649, page 693. That goes back to 1898. If you claim not to be a citizen, then you are an alien. That's found at 8 U.S.C. 1101 and 1481. Aliens must also obey the laws of this country while residing here. That's Katab, K-A-A-K-H-A-T-T-A-B, L-E-L, versus U.S. Department of Justice, Eastern District of Pennsylvania, January 22, 1988. In regard to the matter, then, I will... Um, Respect your rights. I've stated them for the record. They are subject to uh, appeal. In regard to the matter, though, um, I am finding that you are subject to the jurisdiction of this court. You are subject to the jurisdiction. You are, uh, you're, I don't even, you haven't even stated that, but any reliance on the 14th Amendment to claim voluntary citizenship I will take it under advisement. I'm overruling. Um, in regard to your refusal to speak or to identify yourself, Ms. Richards, are you able to identify Mr. Sinclair as the person seated here, or is anybody able to do that? Your officer, anybody able to identify him, or do we have an alien, or should I issue a bench warrant because Mr. Damien Sinclair is not here in the courtroom? Your Honor, as an officer of the court, um, I can attest to the fact that the gentleman seated next to Mr. Jaspin is uh, Damian Sinclair. I've known Mr. Sinclair for several years. Um, he's had several cases through my office. If that isn't um, sufficient for the court, I can certainly um, take some testimony from one of the officers who is here for the second time for a preliminary examination. All right, then for the record, I am going to, as I state, note Mr. Sinclair's objections. I am finding that the person before the court who is seated next to Mr. Jasmine at counsel's table and dressed in orange and white is, in fact, Damien Sinclair, Damien Dante, Antoinette Dante Sinclair, as identified by prosecutor Ms. Richards. In regard to the matter, then, we are set to... Um, move forward. The next question I have is in respect to the issue of counsel, and then we're going to get to the preliminary examination. Mr. Kupstadt, I see you're here. We have a brief matter. I'm going to just call the matter, and then uh, we can just leave everybody right where they are. This will just take a second. All right, then we're back on the record in People versus Damien Antonique Dante Sinclair. The record should reflect the appearances remain the same in respect to the arguments concerning the uh, unrecognition of the jurisdiction of the court. I've made my rulings. I've ruled against Mr. Sinclair. His objections are noted for the record and preserved for appeal. In regard to Mr. Jaspin's motion here, uh, what's your position, Mr. Sinclair? Do you wish that he remain as uh, your attorney of record, or do you wish that he not be your attorney of record and you want to disclose to the court that you are going to represent yourself? I do not understand. All right. Mr. Sinclair. Are you willing to waive or give up your right to have an attorney represent you in these matters, in this felony matter? Or do you want to have an attorney a record? I don't know who you're talking to, but I'm not Mr. Sinclair and I'm not a person. I'm a live human being. I understand I'm all that. Person. I'm going to I'm going to note that and it's preserved for the record. The only question I'll call you Damien then because you said I could call you Damien. Damien. Do you want Mr. Jaspin as attorney of counsel of record, or do you want to waive your right to have counsel? I do not understand. All right, then what do you not understand, Mr. Sinclair? I do not understand. What don't you understand? You have to specify.
What don't you understand? I do not understand. All right, then. I guess if you can't understand, there is some legitimacy to the question of whether or not you're competent to stand trial and competent to make these decisions. In addition, the court does have the power to make the determination about whether or not I should sue a sponte refer you to the Forensic Center for Evaluations. And if you have such a difficult time as understanding such an easy concept of whether or not you want a lawyer or whether or not you want to represent yourself, you're telling me I'm going to make that decision for you. And then Mr. Sinclair will send you down to the forensic center where they can figure out if you know how to add one and one or not. All right. That's where we're going. Well, I object to the court's decision to make a legal determination over my persona. And that's noted for the record, Mr. Sinclair. So this is it. Going, going, gone. Last time I'm going to ask you, noting your objections for the record, do you want to proceed with or without counsel? I'm not Mr. Sinclair. I'm the beneficiary, and I demand that this court operate in harmony with the Constitution of the for the United States of America. All right, Mr. Sinclair, go ahead. I'm noting your objections and all your comments are on the record. I'll give you one last shot here. What do you want to say? Keep going. I don't know who you're talking to, but as the beneficiary, Damian, of the Sinclair family, I'm asking the court to operate in a manner that does not obscure which jurisdiction that they're working under. You failed to mention which jurisdiction that this court is under. All right, Mr. Sinclair, I've ruled this court is under the jurisdiction of the Michigan laws. We are court. I'm recognizing you. You are Damien Sinclair. I'm finding that. You won't answer the question. That's two hearings now. Apparently, you're unable to answer that question. So therefore, I'm not going to grant your motion to withdraw. I'm going to sua sponte enter orders for competency evaluation as well as criminal responsibility for Mr. Sinclair. When those evaluations have been completed, we'll set the matter for a continued preliminary examination. Anything else? Could you prepare the orders for signature then, Ms. Richards? I will, Your Honor. Can I address one other issue? You may. Um, I apologize for the timing of this, Your Honor. Um, unfortunately, we have no control over how quickly the lab, um, the state police crime lab operates. Um, but we did receive a second lab report yesterday um, concerning two of the four substances that were seized. Um, I immediately notified Mr. Jaspin uh, as counsel for Mr. Sinclair. Um, that my intention would be to file an amended complaint in this matter, unless Mr. Sinclair wished to accept the offer that was presented to him by Ms. Cass in a letter dated June 27th, um, having not received a response and um, given the procedural status of where we are, um, I will be uh, having the officer swear to the amended uh, second amended complaint and serving Mr. Sinclair with that second amended complaint um, based on the identification of two additional controlled substances by the laboratory. In regard to one other issue I wanted to address for the record as well concerning the letter I received from Mr. Sinclair yesterday, Mr. Jaspin, you are still uh, assigned counsel. He is requesting an appeal. I'm not sure what issues or what else on regarding July 11th. And so I am finding that he is qualified for assigned counsel. I've found that um, in regard to the, do you need paperwork on that issue? I, I guess it's, it's my understanding from prior conversations with him that what he wants to appeal is the contempt by um, That's my belief in any of it. Um, I don't know at this stage whether um, he is entitled to an appeal as of right. Um, I guess I, I was again, based on the threats he's made against me, I would ask that I be removed from the case. 
I don't see any way that I can effectively um, represent him at this point. Well, and then your backhand request on the outside, the other side is your mouth, is that nobody can represent him because he's not going to cooperate with any council. Going, if he, no, that's not what I, my position was. If, if he's being set for the forensic examinations, assuming at some point they, whether they believe he is now, or at some point he's competent to stand trial, and he's, uh, you know, he's able to cooperate, I guess somebody else can be appointed. But I don't think at this point I should be required. As I said, with the threats he's made against me, I should. I don't think I should be required to continue as his attorney. Do you wish to be heard, Miss Richards? No, Your Honor. I guess I would ask that the court consider um, keeping Mr. Jaspin as standby counsel if, if the court's inclined to relieve him of the appointment. All right, Mr. Jaspin, I'll grant your request, but your office is going to have to assign different counsel. I don't want standby counsel at this point. I want counsel of record, and we'll go from there. If and when he's, if he, depending on his determination and what happens, if he wants to waive his right to counsel later on, if he ever will say the magic words, then I'll consider no counsel. But until then, based on his refusal to acknowledge the jurisdiction of this court or to answer any questions. I am uh, referring him for evaluations. In regard to the issue of the appeal though, of the um, contempt sentence, that is going to be assigned then by Ms. Mashik, is that my understanding? Um, Who's taking it from the office, do you know? Well, if it's a matter that we, well, I guess I'm frankly it hasn't come up. I'm not sure how that works. So, I mean, an appeal, I'm presuming, would have to be the circuit court. But right. I don't. I guess it hasn't come up before, so I frankly don't know the answer to how that's going to work out. All right. Well, we're going to refer the matter to Ms. Mashik of the Assigned Counsel Division concerning this matter. It was filed exactly on the 14th day. Uh, I'll sign the order, finding that he qualifies for assigned counsel. No, Those transcripts were ordered a couple of weeks ago, correct? Yes. All right. So that's what we're doing on that issue. That's only the appeal and to appoint somebody else on the charge. On the felony charge, yes. All right. All right, then that's it for today. I'll look forward to those orders from your office. Make sure Mr. Jaspin sees them first. Mr. Jaspin, I'm going to require you stay on long enough to review the orders. Then you can file your substitution of counsel, whoever is uh, decide, you decide to appoint. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you all. We're off the record.